Hey guys, Randy Potato here to talk about the latest hotfix patch to the Altar of Hope update for Darkest Dungeon 2. This patch brings considerable changes to region generation. Let's review some of the key points. For general changes, they are adjusting the length of the non-sluice regions. The first region will be shorter in order to facilitate more runs to get out of that region and for newer players to accumulate candles easier, while region 2 will be the same and region 3 will be longer to further scale the difficulty. For me, this is a fantastic change, although with the latest change to make Guardian easier, I wasn't having much trouble in region 1 as it was. But for newer players and for the new candle progression system, I see this as a positive. Next, they're removing the guarantees of a watchtower in short regions and removing the guaranteed oasis and creature den from all regions. This is done to make these super nodes feel more special. I can see the Oasis as that has become easily one of the most OP nodes in the game, but I feel the Creature Den offers a fair challenge for a fair reward, and I'm sad that we'll see less of them. The positive for me is this is another attempt from Red Hook to make mastery more scarce, which is needed to give more meaningful decisions to the players and incentivize more risks like lair bosses. They're also giving us more academic studies and more cultist nodes. The academic study increase is to make the Shambler more prominent per the patch notes, I appreciate this aspect, although overall academic studies are not my favorite nodes. More cultists are a welcome addition as it gives more opportunity to get cultist trinkets, and I believe these fights are some of the most difficult and interesting in the game. Each region itself is also going to be more unique in how nodes are spawned. This is a welcome change to create more interesting region decisions at the end. The Sprawl will, as its name suggests, have more path choices available on average. You will get more Hoarder and Hospital spawns. This makes this a prime location for the late game, as you'll get more opportunity to purchase elite sprawl trinkets like the Snappy Swig. This also further buffs the Runaway, who has already been buffed as of last patch, since all her good trinkets are in this region. More Hospitals is great in the late game, not only for brushing off diseases for the mountain, but also for relic dumping into quirk maintenance, both for this run and the next if you're using memories. You will get less academic caches, which I rarely care about, but the major downside is no oasis or creature den can spawn here now. Along with the major librarian buff, this makes this region less compelling if you are not specifically hunting sprawl trinkets. You also spawn in more resistance and cultist encounters here, which pairs nicely with the increase in hoarders since resistant encounters give bobbles unlike the cultists. The Fodor will have the same path availability as on previous patches. You'll get less hospitals and oasis, but fortunately not none. And in exchange, you get more caches, again, not too useful, but a guaranteed creature den, which fits thematically. You spawn more citizen encounters than resistance and studies, which is bad for overall loot, but if you're a new player playing with Torchlight, this could make this a decent first region. Overall, I feel the changes here nerf the Fodor, although the creature den guarantee is fantastic. The Tangle was already my pick for top region, and it got slightly buffed this patch in my opinion. You get less hospitals, hoarders, and watchtowers in exchange for more oasis and creature dens, two of the premier nodes. You get slightly more studies and lose some resistance and assistance. How much you lose will be the deciding factor in how much this matters, but it's only a slight nerf. And finally the shroud. Every row path will have two choices and watchtowers and oasis are now guaranteed, with everything else standard. This is a good buff for the shroud, although not enough for me to consider this region in a serious run. There's always a skip here because of the overall difficulty and the pitiful trophy rewards. The sluice got a minor change. Every path will now have one to two choices instead of one to three, and academic caches are now added to the mix. This makes region one sluice potentially a slight upgrade, but I generally prioritize mastery and baubles in the sluice, and this dilutes the resistance pool slightly, so it's still probably an overall nerf to the region. And finally, we have some battle loot balancing changes. As stated before, Mastery Rewards got nerfed, which I warmly welcome. This encourages more lair attempts and increases the value of the currently almost worthless Hero Shrines, once unlocks are complete of course. Also makes more interesting decisions on upgrades if you end up without full mastery at the end. We'll have to see exactly how big the nerf was. Food is now no longer a combat reward possibility, only being found at assistance encounters or shops. This is also a good change to buff the currently weak especially on Infernal, Assistance Encounters, and to make more interesting Provisioner decisions. 
Road combat loot is getting nerfed, which is fine as these fights have always seemed more of a punishment and decision dilemma than something to farm. They also intend to create more identity in the loot between the different factions. Resistance encounters are getting a small boost overall to make up for their slight reduction in spawn rate. Fight nodes are the bread and butter of this game, so any boost of them is fine in my opinion. Cultist nodes no longer drop relics for some reason, but have a needed boost and trinket chance. I don't hate the relic loss here, as it further incentivizes road fights and layers to farm relics. Shamblers now give guaranteed two mastery, which makes farming them more of an option with the increase in academic studies and the drop in overall mastery chance. The sentry fights in the lair lose their guaranteed item drop, while the boss gains more guaranteed loot, further incentivizing more boss battles, which is great for the game. The Guardian node no longer drops relics, again a further nerf to relics overall, which strengthens other locations which guarantee relics, but increased loot for everything else, including notably an in item. And finally, more guaranteed creature den loot at the cost of removing trinket chance entirely. Overall, these changes should add more variety, more decision making, and an overall improved experience for the game, for new and experienced players alike. This update is a part of the larger Altar of Hope update, and is now live on Experimental and should arrive on the main branch in the coming weeks. Thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe for more Darkest Dungeon 2 content, and let me know in the comments your thoughts on this update.